We ended up the, the last video with um, me planning to change all the caps that need changing to see if I could get the oscillator back because as we noticed there's absolutely no oscillator signal of present in the radio. And what I realized is that this part of the radio, this uh, oscillator section, actually doesn't have any of those really bad caps in it. So I decided to go about it a different way. I, um, I mean, there is one here, but that's part of the, the tetrode, whatever it's called, or pentode. Or, anyway, it's part of that side of the tube, not the oscillator, oscillator section. And we know this section is not oscillating at all. So I decided to go about it a different way. I started tracing all the components in this section and all the connections in this section. And what I found is that everything matches, everything's fine, all these components are fine in terms of value, until we get to this part here. If you look at coil 20, L21 and L22, this is a feedback part, L22 is a feedback part from that anode and it comes up there along here and down here and it forms the feedback to create a positive feedback loop and therefore create the oscillation and obviously it then resonates with this part of the coil, the L21 um, which is in this section, this LC section in parallel with the tuning capacitor and therefore it causes the oscillation when you push uh, FM, the U, you basically take that oscillator and you short it to ground. And therefore you stop that oscillator when you're pressing uh, for um, FM. But otherwise, this whole oscillatory circuit is working through this part of the tube, this uh, uh, triode part of this tube, the ECH81. So I decided to look at it very carefully and I found, much to my disappointment, that there was no continuity across that coil. Now this coil is part, it's a two-part coil with the tuning lug inside and you can adjust it then to, to do the uh, RF alignment but there's no continuity in that coil and that then makes sense that there is no oscillation because basically what you've got is a dead open circuit uh, in this part of the uh, oscillator. So this one's fine that one's fine, that one is not showing any signs of life. So I need to check what, what's wrong with that. Now generally with these coils they don't really have any high voltage on there so usually they are open for two, one of two reasons. Either the solder contact, soldering connection is, uh, is bad at the two ends so it might not be making contact properly or um, you've accidentally broken one of these wires, which is a bit of a bummer. If it happens near the connections, you can still uh, recover them. If it happens further out, it can be a real pain in the butt. So what I've done so far, and I'll show you what the coil is like, and I'll show you what I've done so far in trying to sort out this problem. So here's the coil that we're talking about. It's this one over here. And this guy has two windings on it. One of them is that L22, which comes from pin 8 of the tube and uh, connects to the bottom section of the, of the uh, LC circuit. So that is actually between that point there and that point there. And as you can see, we have continuity, okay? You can hear. The other two, the other coil, was between this point here on the tuning capacitor, and I've removed it, I've just desoldered it from there. And the other one, this one here, this little red, well, this little wire, actually went to that point over there. And between there and there, there was no continuity. So my uh, next step was to desolder it from these points, make these points available, and look at this. We've got continuity. So our coil is fine, which is great news, because these are a real bummer to, 
to fix and um, all I really need to do now is resolder them carefully and see if we can uh, re-establish continuity there. So I'm going to move this away for now and uh, try and do that. I need to clean the old solder off and then solder it with some flux. Make sure that it makes a good connection. And then we'll test it to see if we've got our uh, oscillator back. Now, if, I, if this hadn't worked, one can actually fix this. You can actually unwind these and rewind them. These are wound in a particular fashion to minimize, they're interweaved to minimize the uh, capacitance between the, 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 the wires. But you can actually wind them. Um, in fact, you can actually just ignore that coil and put another one on top of this one. And then you have to play around with the with the core to try and establish the frequency you want to operate at. But it's certainly a lot better when you've got the original core or the original coil working. Because you'll never get it exactly right. So that is actually a relief to find that that is the problem. It's a soldering problem. Um, obviously a solder joint that went dry and not actually a, uh, a problem with the component. So let me sort that out and get back to you. The coil has been soldered in again. And we now, if we check for continuity in the same spots that we did before and got none, which was that point. There we go, we've got continuity. So now we need to just test to see if the oscillator function is back. And to do that, I'm going to switch on the dimmer limiter, so it's on restricted power. The radio is on medium wave. Volume doesn't matter right now. And we'll take our, got the scope on very sensitive 10 millivolts per division. And there we go. Right, if I put that coil near the coil that we've just fixed, let me just drop that a bit. There's our oscillator signal. And how do I know that's my oscillator signal? Because if I turn the tuning capacitor, I'm reading 1.6 megs. One point five, one point six, one point seven, one point eight. There we go. We've got it working. And if I put the long wave, long wave is slightly different here in shape, but we've still got the same situation. Changes frequency. So we've got our oscillator back which is great news. Now we need to try and see if we receive anything. And for that, I prefer to turn this guy around. So I'm ready to give it a test again to see if we get any reception. I have an antenna in the, in the back here for AM. I am limiting the power and power is on medium wave dial lamps have now been changed so they're working put the volume up see what we get well we've got radio noises picking up something. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that uh, we get very little reception, very few stations on medium wave and AM in Madeira. In fact, on AM we get absolutely zilch, except at night sometimes on uh, 165 kilohertz is a French station. But I'm getting something on medium wave. Don't expect anything here. Just 
just a bit of hiss. And of course, our FM, unfortunately, is still deaf. Let me put the power up a bit more. The radio is now seeing 220 volts, which is nearly full power. A few scratches there. This almost seems like a tuning capacitor shorting inside. But I worry about that next. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue with uh, the original plan of uh, taking out all the capacitors. Actually, I've just put full power on FM. Still getting nothing. Try a little antenna on here on the FM. Now that sounds like reception, except it's not picking anything up there. So we may have a similar problem. But anyway, I'm happy. Medium wave's fine, or the AM is fine. At least uh, it's working. So now that um, I've got the signal coming through, the next stages follow the normal course, which is to get the signal improving by uh, fixing up those caps, replacing those bad caps, checking components. I know the oscillator part has been done. Obviously, we'll need to check for RF alignment uh, to see whether we, we're getting the right station in the right position on the dial. I have a feeling that it's going to be off quite a bit, but I'll do that later. So this is going to take its normal course now and um, move on to component checking and replacement. And when I get that uh, bit further ahead, I'll get back to you. All right. See you soon.